Hey you guys, we got our very first AP style problem to talk about and kind of go through together here on this video today. Um, I know you're fully capable of reading these words up here, this little story about these three different rivers, but um, the short story of this here is that they've taken these three rivers and they took 20 different locations at each of the three rivers and took water samples and they're measuring the concentration of aldrin. So aldrin is a pesticide. They're trying to figure out how highly concentrated the pesticide is in each of these rivers by testing 20 different places in each river. And what they did is they made three different box plots. You can see we've got our three graphs down here, river X, river Y, and river Z. And the concentrations of aldrin in parts per million, that's what PPM stands for. Down here on the x-axis, everything clearly labeled so I can show um, the similarities and differences between them. So as you can see, our problem number one says compare. And we have this really, really important word here, which is compare. This is an extremely common AP style problem. Um, we'll be doing comparison types of problems between graphs and distributions um, all year long. And it's really, really important that you know what compare means. If you remember the acronym SOX that we've been using throughout this chapter, and remember what the acronym SOX stands for, it's the letters kind of rearranged a little bit just so it's an acronym we could remember, but shape, center, spread, and outliers. So anytime you see this word compare, um, and that's going forward from here on until the end of the year when you guys take the AP exam, when you see the word compare, that's always what they want to see for full credit, shape, center, spread, outliers. The average AP student isn't going to be able to mention and go into the detail that the rubrics here are wanting to see. So shape, center, spread, outliers. And the other thing that's really important about comparing is that you will for sure lose credit if you just go river X, the center is this, the spread is this, there are outliers here. It doesn't, that's not a valid comparison. So you need to be using words like whereas, and one is bigger than the other, and one is less spread out than the other, and the center here is higher than this one. So you need to be directly comparing the river. So I'm going to start with shape. Alright, so I've kind of written out what um, the verbiage for shape should look like. So. I have that river X has somewhat of a right skew, and what I'm looking at when I'm looking at that is that, first of all, the whiskers seem about the same. That's usually the first gauge in terms of which way is it skewed, but look how big the gap is between the median in Q3 versus the median in Q1. So much larger gap here. Not gap, but it's more spread out here. Um, that means we have a right skew because it's on the right side of the graph. And I use this word somewhat, which is important. I've highlighted some keywords down here. Somewhat implies that it's not exactly, or it's not perfectly, um, but somewhat just kind of gives you a little bit of freedom in terms of your description. When we're looking at river Y, even though, yeah, one of the whiskers here is a little bit longer than the other one, but due to the fact that the median appears to be right in the middle of Q1 and Q3, um, I would say roughly or approximately symmetric. I don't think it would be wrong to talk about a left, a very, very slight left skew here, it's kind of up for interpretation, but you're just trying to demonstrate knowledge that you understand what shape means. And just keep in mind that when we talk about shape, your options pretty much are left skewed, right skewed, or symmetric. That's kind of what we're talking about when we do shape. And then the last one, River Z, again, the whiskers are about the same size, but look at how much space is in here between Q1 and the median versus the median and Q3. So that's a slight left skew. Alright, so next we're talking about center, and just because we have box plots here, you know that the middle of the box plot, this middle line right here, refers to median, so that's why I chose to talk about median when I'm talking about center. Another way to describe center would be to use means, and we know the differences and similarities between medians and means in all different situations. In this case, I have no idea what any of the means are, so that's why I'm talking about medians. However, if we were doing um, maybe a histogram, a mean might be easier to talk about. So just keep that in mind that you don't always have to talk about median when it's center. But in this case, because we're looking at box plots, that makes the most sense. And so again, I'm comparing the three. So I have the highest one, the middle one, the lowest one. I'm not just saying river X's median is this. River Y's median is this. You will lose points for that. You have to compare them. So the highest median concentration occurs in river X. It's also very, very important that whenever possible, if you can come up with a number to support why you're saying it's the highest, that is very important to include. So about 5.3, I don't know exactly, that's an estimate, that's why I put the word about. And then labeling PPM, parts per million, because that's the units that this question is talking about. 
followed by River Y at about 5, and then River Z has the lowest median of the three at about 4.3 parts per million. Very similarly, when we're talking about spread, um, there's actually two different options that would be considered acceptable answers here to talk about spread. Spread, you know, means how spread out your data is. So since we're talking about box plots here, and that's what we're looking at and comparing, an IQR, meaning Q3 minus Q1, is the um, one of the ways that you could talk about um, the differences between the spreads. You could also do range, which would be minimum minus maximum. And if I were doing range, that would also be correct. I just chose one of them. I chose IQR. But remember, range, you're looking at the maximum and the minimum number here, and you're subtracting them. I did IQR, so I did Q3 minus Q1, and again, we don't know what these exact numbers are, that's why I'm using the word about very liberally. So River X is obviously the most spread out if you look at IQR or if you look at range, but I labeled my IQR of about 3 ppm for that, followed by River Y about 2 ppm, and then River Z about 1 ppm. All right, and then last but not least, the easiest thing to tell from looking at these three box plots up here, we don't have any asterisks. So remember the asterisk or the little star, that's what indicates that we have an outlier, and we have none of those up here, so I just wrote there are no outliers in any of the distributions of Aldrin concentration in any of the three rivers. So the reason why I highlighted distributions of Aldrin concentration is because another thing you should know about AP rubrics is that kind of to get full credit, you might get dinged one point every now and then if you don't have context in your answer. So context means, again, go back to the problem. What are we talking about here? What are these distributions showing? They're showing distributions of Aldrin concentration. So if you just said there were no outliers, I think you might get almost all the points, but you would probably be dinged because you don't have context. So just keep that in mind when you're doing your comparisons. All right, so next thing we have to do here is it's asking us to do a stem plot that displays the concentrations of Aldrin for River X. So if you want to flip back to the first page for a second, River X is that top box plot, the one that was really spread out. And these are all of the 20 different measurements that were taken from this river and put into that box plot. So here are our individual numbers, which is important. And it's asking us to do a stem plot. So I can see I'm just kind of breezing through my numbers here that my minimum um, number that I have looks like 3.4. There's my minimum. My maximum number looks to be the 8.7, I think. Yes, that is correct. So I'm going to maybe go from 3 to 8. So 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then what I'm doing is in order listing the leaves. So the 3 through 8, those are called the stems. And then the leaves are the individual values. So since 3.4 is my smallest one, I'm going to put the 4 first. And then it looks like the only other three I have is 3.7, so that goes next. And I'm crossing them off as I go, so I make sure that I get every single one of them. And then you can fill in the stem plot as so. So what you can do is pause the video and um, make sure that you knock all those off. This is what the final product should look like. And then the only thing that you need to remember besides the fact that we have a title up here, it's always very important anytime you do any kind of a distribution, Remember, the distribution word is just a fancy word for a different kind of graph because there are so many different types of graphical representations of data that we have talked about this chapter. So anytime you do any sort of a distribution, you always need to tell whoever's looking at the distribution what you're looking at. This is Aldrin concentrations. We have units here in PPM, and this is specifically River X, not River Y, not River Z, not all the rivers, just River X. And then I got to make sure that it's very clear what these numbers represent. So the most common way to look at a stem and leaf plot is to think that 3 4 means 34. In this case, that's not correct. It is 3.4. If it was 34, I think that would be very alarming in terms of the amount of pesticide in this um, river. So what I'm going to do is 3 4 equals 3.4 ppm. That is my key. And that makes sure that it's very clear what all these numbers stand for and what they represent. So last but not least, you guys describe a characteristic of the distribution of Aldrin concentration in the River X that you can see in the stem plot, which is part B, but you cannot see in the box plot, which is the first part that we did, the three box plots that were um, all on top of each other. So first of all, number one, um, probably most important and most obvious, 
is that in that stem plot that we just did up here, we can see all the individual values. We know every single um, number or ppm that was taken from river x, we know all 20 of them. In that box plot, we only knew those five numbers, and we didn't even really know them. We just had to estimate them. So that's really important um, and probably the most obvious difference. A couple other things to keep in mind. Number two, um, you can see modes and peaks in the stem plot, but you cannot see those in the box plot because it's just all connected with boxes and whiskers, right? So um, in terms of modes up here, it looks like we have two different 5.3s. We have two different 4.6s. So those are two different modes for this distribution. We can see that we have a peak in the fours. That's the, um, the fours have the most number of concentrations. And same thing for number three. Similarly, we notice that there's a gap between 5.6 and 7.3. Um, you can't tell if there's any gaps at all in box plots, but look, we had no Aldrin concentrations whatsoever that started with a value of six, six point anything. So those are um, all things to be keeping in mind. Box plots tell us a lot of information, but stem plots are better in these respects because it gives you more information. Anyways, thanks for watching, you guys. Um, this is kind of key things in order to get um, full credit on free response types of questions. You will see questions similar to this on your chapter test, so hopefully um, all the stuff I was talking about kind of makes sense, and we reviewed a lot of vocabulary and a lot of different things and kind of introduced you to the first set of grading um, AP style rubric type of stuff. So a lot of info here. Watch the video again if you want to. Maybe breeze through it um, before taking the test and uh, bring your questions to class, okay? Have a good night.